All right, welcome to Broker to Broker, uh, brought to you by AIM, the Association of Independent Mortgage Experts. I am your host, J.P. Hussey of the Hussey Team Mortgage Advisors, and today we have Evan Einhorn of Modern Home Lending yeah. out of Arizona, right? Yeah. What what part of Arizona? Uh, I live in Tempe, but Scottsdale, Arizona is where we're based, and yeah. cool. S- serving the whole state. Our Just boy like Todd broker. Bitter's out there too, right? Yes. You know Todd? Do you know him well? Uh, funny story about Todd that I told him. Well, let's get a quick, it. no, quick, I love quick this. Side note. Let's go. So, um, it was like gotten into being a broker a year and a half ago, three years ago, family friend of mine came, got pre-qualified, sat down in my office, which I don't even, not all my clients come in my office, right, right. went through the whole process. And then they came to me and they're like, Hey, here's this. I don't even know if it was, no, if it was a loan estimate or a good faith estimate at the time, but they're like. Can you beat this? Right. And I knew we couldn't. I like before I even went to my manager and asked, like, "Hey, can you cut him a deal?" I knew we couldn't. And I'm like, who, who, "Like it's Todd Bitter." Yeah. Looked it up. <laughs> and it said United Wholesale Mortgage. I'm like I've never heard of this company. Mm-hmm. Never heard of them. Looked them up. I'm like I still have no idea. And I'm like, I wish I could access their rate sheets. Little did I know, years later, UWM would be my top one lender. Get out of here. So Todd Bitter and Todd Bitter was on the other side. Yeah, so I got to the tell legend. that story a couple weeks ago to him, and he's like, "Okay, hey, small world." Nice. So. Are you originally from Arizona? I'm originally from Arizona. Cool. Yeah. Born in Detroit, moved there when I was seven months old. So I think I can call myself. So you came full circle now, using right. UWM, which is hey, Detroit. Right. Uh, you know. There you go. Well, that's cool, man. So let let's learn a little bit more about you, right? Of course. Tw- Twenty-seven years old. Yes. Youngin, Youngin. Uh, how long have you been in the industry? So I've been in the industry technically since I was seventeen. So Ooh, fun story all in right, high school. I want to go all the way back now. Of course, of course, all right. Of course, so course. seventeen, twenty-seven. Go. So le- let's go back even to junior year of high school. Okay. Junior year of high school, trying to get a scholarship in college. Counselors like, hey, you shouldn't just take four classes. You should take an extra elective. What, what five. scholarship were you going for? Was this sports I was just trying related to get a full or ride. no uh, academic? Just whatever it was. Yep, okay. academic. Definitely not sports, <laughs> especially if you All know right, me. Cool. <laughs> All right, cool. <laughs> so take you know my counselor was like, take five classes instead of four. It looks better that way. You're not just doing the bare minimum to graduate. I'm like, okay, mm-hmm. what is there? There's there's a real estate class, so you can get your real estate license. I'm like, okay, that's kind of cool. I'm not really interested in real estate. Ended up taking the class. I was working at a sports bar. And then all of a sudden, I realized they weren't. They, they they paid us from a different store. They weren't ordering liquor. So that's when I started looking on Craigslist for jobs. Okay. And Real, this is when you were 17, 17, 17 18. About to range. graduate high school. So spring semester, senior year. Went on Craigslist. Craigslist, real estate assistant job paying $12 an hour. And for mm-hmm. me, that's $1,000 a month as a high school kid. Like, that's amazing. Right, right. Yeah, it was good stuff. So got the job. Uh, worked at the... That Keller Williams branch for you know three months learned a lot, um, left on mutual good terms, and I was in real estate for three years: freshman, sophomore, junior year of college. Um, had other plans, but you know, real estate it sucks you in. I'm oh, sure. Yeah. Like, what was your goal as a like, kid? Well, did or, you did you make? Uh, my goal was to, to be a baseball player. Now, I, you know, I, I wanted I'm to work five in six and you know, side. didn't work out. <laughs> but uh, so. When you were in college, right? Mm-hmm. Where'd you go? Arizona State. All right, so cool. I'm but you were in real estate. Yep. Were you making decent money? I mean, yes. it's all relative at that point in time, but you were you were doing you were selling it and going to school. So I was 18. Okay. Um, but I hustled. Like my first summer, I closed 10 rentals. And in a two and a half month period, I made over five right. grand. And the rentals were what first month's uh, rent? Is that usually Pre- what you got paid? Now it's way worse, but you used to get paid like three percent of the total rent. Are you still licensed? Is uh, it no, real? okay, no, no. I mean, I'm full in on mortgage. I got you. I was just wondering. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, but yeah, I mean, for a college kid, I was doing pretty well. Um, over the course of three and a half years, I did like forty rentals and twenty sales. Wow. So, that, well, solid part-time agent. Yeah, you know. Yeah, it's a solid part-time agent. A super stellar for we a college some kid. You know, not as good part-time. <laughs> so, but okay. So, so you're in college. So th- you started 17. That's how you got in, right? Right. right? All right. So then you graduate from college. So am I missing a piece? Yep, missing a little piece. Okay. I don't know if you were here from earlier, but um, junior year, of course, 
Yeah, my mom. I can. I can. All right. So junior I, year. This is what 2000. 2013. 13. Yep. Okay. I can so give, the rule. 2011 is when the rules changed. CFPB. All right. I, 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 I have know, no I, idea. I, I, I got in. Agent, I right? got in 2011. So I never saw yep. the stuff before that. I got in right when the rules were only can pay, get paid on one side of the transit. The whole thing. Right? right. So 2013. That's where we're at now. Okay. Go. Yep. Junior year. Yep. So. My, I, I give credit to my mom. She's like, you got to do, you got to do a corporate internship. You're getting a good degree, which I was. I was at, I actually got three bachelor degrees from ASU. Okay. I like to joke around. I don't use any of them. Right. <laughs> but, you know, did a corporate internship and like, there is no way I am, I'm definitely sticking in the real estate industry. And, you know, I just decided, hey, I like numbers. I like what the mortgage guy is doing. A um, little tired of driving around, and I think I could scale right. a business better. So then I pivoted, got my mortgage license while I was doing a corporate internship in Iowa at John okay. Deere. So At John Deere. And okay. this is, I've lived in Arizona my whole life. So I'm out there getting my mortgage license, made the switch, hopped around a few companies for a year, stuck with a retail lender for three years. Mm-hmm. And I've been on the mortgage broker side for about a year and a half, almost two years. Okay, so you're about yep. 20 21 when was, you got into the mortgage side, would you 21 say? 21 when I got on the mortgage side, yep. And you've been hustling, like you said, John Deere, Iowa. Um, you have to be a little bit crazy to be in the mortgage yes. and real estate world, right? Yep. Okay. Yep, yep. So we've, so oh, yeah. crazy. We've, crazy. We've agreed. Yep. <laughs> All right, we've agreed. I that. like to say, I, everyone's right. crazy. So about 2021, 20, you got into the mortgage side, yep. right? And and you started with, uh, did you say with a bank? What was that again? So I started, <laughs> I wasn't where I... I was very immature my first year. Yeah. So first six months, I was at one retail lender. Second couple months, I actually went to a mortgage brokerage. Okay. But there was not much support there, and I had only closed seven loans, so I thought I knew what I was doing. It was a different type of broker back then. Yeah. Yeah. I thought I knew what I was doing, but imagine closing seven loans, trying to close on a loan on your own. Okay. There's no way. Got it. I thought it was a... I blamed it on the broker. It was really me. You know what I mean? I mean, there was no support there. Sure. And then I hopped around to two other retail lenders and then I'm like it's all the same. Yeah. If you can close a loan one place, you can close a loan somewhere else. Mm-hmm. So I was at a great family owned retail company. Again, great company, just different business model for almost 4 years. That's where I found my home. And um like a smaller correspondent type family. I mean, they um, were t- top 30 purchase. Um they did 6 7 billion a year. Oh wow. So, yeah. Okay. I mean, it was I don't know if I can name names. You can name them. Yeah, you can do whatever you want, man. Yeah, I mean, it was Bay Equity Home Loans. I love the Bay McGovern Equity, family. Heard them. Yeah, yeah, that's great. They're great. Um, they were actually in wholesale, and I wonder like, if they stayed in wholesale, if I'd be using them. Right. Well, they gave them. you a lot of information, a lot of guidance to get you to where you're at now. Yep. You know? Yep, yep. I mean, yep. I don't I don't talk shit on anyone that I've right. been with because it, they were stepping stones, if that's even the right word, or they got us to where we're at, right? Right. All right, so you're with Bay Equity, yep. right, for four years, you said? Yep. Pretty much. And then you said about two years ago, a year and a half ago. So, yeah, I mean, you went on this side. Obviously, it doesn't happen overnight, but. Uh, no, that's what we'll get into. March, April, May of 2018 is when I really made the transition. Okay. So, about a year and a half ago. And uh, I mean, by far the best career decision. Yeah. So, <laughs> what what made you, back, end of 2017, you started really thinking about it, right? Then, March 2018 is when it happened about. So, why. It, it actually happened pretty quickly. Like there's little there's little things sprinkled here mm-hmm. and there, like the Todd Bitter story. Yeah, right. You know, plants okay. a little seed in your head. You're like, yeah, okay. Well it's always in the back. Exactly. And then a couple things sparked it. Um, my buddy Evan White from Road to Home Mortgage, he got back in the industry and he's like, Hey, I know you're at a retail lender, you really gotta check out this mortgage broker space. And I'm like, eh, I don't know. Like, can like how quickly can you close a loan? He's like, You don't even like it's quicker than I've ever been before. Mm-hmm. People aren't using Provident like they used before. There's this awesome lender named UWM, and I'm like, I still don't know who they are. I don't remember. Right, right. Um, so he was actually trying to recruit me, and then it actually happened very quickly from there. I needed to check all my boxes. So I'm like, um, is the pricing there? Is the service there? Mm-hmm. Are the programs there? And I had looked into it, I think, about a year prior, and the one thing holding me back was uh, down payment assistance. So... Again, not a primary focus, right. but we're I not the that. best space for that. I mean, there's a couple right. lenders right. that have that, but we're not the best. If that's what you're, you're yeah. saying, yeah. But I think in 2017 or 16, like no lender had it. So, I know of my core realtors, I would lose some of them. 
you know, just knowing that I didn't have the All right, product. So, so this wasn't a rash decision. No. Right? This was little cuts, little bits and yeah. pieces oh, over yeah. time. Yeah. Todd Bitter was the first cut. You're like, all right. <laughs> um, that kind of get you thinking. Right. And then what made you kind of change over and make that decision? Was it, was it Was it pricing? Was it competition that was beating you like what was it for you so i knew there was the process service i knew there was better pricing um i was able to broker a few loans at my company and i was always scared service you lose service um and i saw a lender we were actually able to i was able to auto generate disclosures myself which is something at the time they weren't doing you had a whole disclosure desk yeah the whole disclosure i remember all that yep (laughs) so i'm like wait if this process is actually like way more efficient i wonder how everything else is so I actually physically had to see it. You know, I reached out to my buddy, Evan, who was introducing me to it. Mm-hmm. I reached out to Jeremy, another lender. I'm like, let me verify. Like, I, I, I have to see everything in person. So I actually, like, they logged down in their system. They showed me how things worked. Um, I'm like, okay, I, I'm cool. I'm ready to make this move. I did it for the pricing. I wanted to make sure the service and the products were there. Um, but those last several months, like, when I was at a retail lender, I was demotivated because yeah, same. you know you're not giving your consumer the best deal. And before, you thought you might be close or you might be doing it. But once you know, you right. know. You, you got too smart. You can't, That's what I said. You right? can't you sleep f- at night. You found, you found out too much. <laughs> yeah. Right? Um, okay, cool. So, so that kind of – the pricing obviously is huge because when you're way off right. – um, or at least having the options to give a deal. Yep. Or, you know, the, I work with a lot of local friends, family, and whatnot, mm-hmm. and I want to make sure I'm putting them in the best position and have flexibility at the end. And it, there's a, I'm in the same boat as right. you. And I was demotivated at my old correspondent lender towards the end. Nothing yeah. to do with them. It was just beating me up inside because right. I knew too much. Right. right. All right. So you decided to jump. Now, where are you at now? Because I know nothing about your company right now. Of you course. own it. Own it. Own it. 100% me. Cool. Um, Same here, by the way. How many employees? So now we have seven. Nice. How many LOs? Break it down for me. Of course. So it's me, uh, producing, broker owner. Um, I have another loan officer. And then we recently jumped in the last six months from one to three processors. Nice. So that's been great. Um, And then we have like an admin slash LOA, loan officer assistant, and then also a uh, part-time marketing guy. So. It's been a really good move. Um, when I first started, it was my core solid processor. It was and, just you, uh, when you started, right? It was just you and a processor. And a processor. And now, he made the jump. And, and uh, he came with you, he followed you right off the bat? Yep, yep. He had actually left our previous company. Um, what, you know, just wasn't feeling it. What the, mm-hmm. the office vibe wasn't clicking for him. And I reached out. I'm like, hey, I'm thinking about doing this. Like, are you willing to give it a shot with me? And he said yes. So we kind of went That's at it cool. together. Um, you know that that was that was the most exciting thing. So I give a lot of props to Bruce. Yeah, I mean, and that's what I want to dive into a, right. a bit. Um, and earlier, Tony Davis, we were talking about this as well. Like, if you're going to make the jump, like it's not it's not easy. Right. We have to let people know that. Right. Right. You have to have some. You have to have experience in in mortgages. You can't just go into a blind. You can't just say, "Listen, I'm going to be a figurehead and we'll build the back end later." <laughs> it's all a bunch of bullshit, right? right? Like it's tough, right? Right. You had some support. Like I, when I started mine, it was me and my brother, Nick. Okay. Right? He's 26. He's a little bit younger cool. than you. I'm 36, right? We're born the same yeah. day, December 29th. It's crazy, right? He came with me. I needed him, or I'd be, I have no idea where I'm at. So if you're going to start your own smaller type brokerage, you recommend going at it alone or having someone to support you in some way, shape, or form with you? I think it depends on your production. Like I had the production. That's a good point. And it was only like, my business has grown exponentially, mm-hmm. but I was doing six to eight deals personally a month. And I knew I could support a salary of a processor, even if we had a slow month, mm-hmm. you know, or I had, I, I actually had some savings that I basically had three months of savings. If we didn't close a deal, I'd be okay. I could run the business. Mm-hmm. Um, but I know people that have gotten contract processors, you know, that are like, I'm going to start just using contract processing and I'm cool with that. Um, I think to scale, you need in-house processing. Um, just makes things a lot easier. But if you want to start with contract processing or self-processing, that's okay as long as you understand like the people that want to self-process, you have to know what you're getting into. Mm-hmm. You know, getting into the nitty-gritty. Um, which I've self-processed some loans too. When we get bit, when we got busy you and do we what were you got to do. pains, exactly. So 
I'm not afraid of it. Is there is there a dollar figure that you can put on startup costs? <laughs> you know, that's tough, it's, right? It's tough with, and with it a two by person, state. with two people coming in. That was basically how I was. I, I'm the the loan officer. Got my brother Nikki, who's licensed. Yep. But we came in. It was just us two. And I so I so everyone knows I put in 15 G's. Uh, I just put into a bank account. That's exactly what I did. Exactly so I just fifteen thousand. Um, because I'm like, that's what I'm gonna I do. I, I started with ten, and then I slowly filtered in yeah, another you filtered five. Another five, right? Um, all right, so we can yeah. almost so agree. That's a ballpark. About fifteen, twenty, ten and, to twenty. And I think if you're starting it yourself with no one on salary and just yourself, you can probably get down to four or five thousand. Mm-hmm. Um, but you just got to know you're doing all the work, and it's easier with someone else. Um, but if you're doing two loans a month and you're learning on the two or three loans. Mm-hmm. You have 40 hours a week. I always remind people of that. Like, if you have, you know, if you're not doing any loans and you have 40 hours a week, you should be learning, you know, yeah. or going out and getting business. Yeah. So, 100%. Yeah. All right. So, we talked, to, we're having fun already, but <laughs> let's talk about some of the the, the pain starting that. Like, what are some of the things that you just did not think were going to happen when you started? It wasn't um, even in your mind. And then you're like, oh, shit, I need, I need this. I need to do this. So, I feel like I'm, an interview being asked, what's your biggest weakness? But, uh, <laughs> nah, yeah. but um, I hate to turn it around, but like the biggest thing, like, I don't know if you heard earlier, but before I started, so I did so much due diligence. You did. One of my, one of my majors in college was computer information systems. So I'm a detailed guy. Okay. I went through on Brawl, the brokers, you know, railing against yeah. hotel. Now it's brokers, our better group. Mm-hmm. In March, I literally read every post for like four months. So I wasn't even posting questions because you don't even know what to ask. No, you can search. There's a search function. Now, everyone in Brokers are Better, use the search function yeah. first. <laughs> yeah. Now, uh, AC, Casa, he's got to approve it, I think. But not to get off, but you yeah. read everything so of what I, other brokers were doing. I read literally every question that every new broker, you know, and then I also had three local brokers that I could ask questions to that – Two of them recently made this transition, and then one of them was in the business for a while. And small stuff, like the biggest thing I remember being like, wait, I need a compliance package? Yeah. Like, what is that? Yeah. You know, where do you get that? Um, you know, so that kind of small stuff or like, you know, state-specific things like filing an L- for your LLC. At the time, if you didn't pay a rush fee, or you, you were waiting three months in Arizona to get your LLC. It was? Wow. So you pay the extra $150 to get it expedited. You still had to wait three weeks, but at least you weren't twiddling your thumb yeah. waiting three months. So. Now, you're an LLC, right? Yes. Do you file as an LLC or S Corp? So, uh, that's a good question. Another yeah. small thing I forgot yeah. to file as an S Corp, yep. which uh, definitely had some tax advantages. Didn't lose out too much, but my when I went to my CPA, he's like, file this ASAP. Yep. So for 2019 year, we will be filing as an S Corp. As an S Corp. That's yep. how I'm set up. LLC, S Corp. Yeah. Okay. Um, so when you started... You read everything in, in Brawl or Brokers are Better. Yep. Just to soak it all in. Like you said, you're detail-oriented. You've done your due diligence right. already. Right. This wasn't a rash decision. Right, 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 right. Um, definitely want to dabble in LinkedIn more. Dude, LinkedIn's big right now. I it's know. back, dude. I know. I'm telling you. I'm personally on Snapchat. Um, the funny thing is you're at Fuse, right? Yeah. Yeah, I, mean, I saw you on stage. Yeah, yeah, of course yeah. you were at Fuse. Yeah. Um, I've been dabbling with TikTok for TikTok. Like a, over a month. I just started it's, mine. Yeah. I'm, a, I'm addicted. It's it's fun for now. It's not necessarily getting business, but it's fun. Right, right, right. Know, and yeah, yeah. Make mortgages fun. That's what we do. That's what we're supposed to be doing, right? So. Right. Um, all right, cool. So you're you're creating your your own single brand as well. Yeah. We, but you're using like you said SEO. And we blog to, a ton to get the name out on like online reviews. We do. You know, I've probably gotten five or six online applications from random people Googling us. Cool. We're in Old Town Scottsdale, great reviews, Mm -hmm. local broker. That's Um, huge. So I paid zero dollars for that. Did you have any issues transferring your reviews over to the brokerage? You know what I mean? (laughs) Yeah, so I was focusing on Zillow reviews when I was in retail. That was all you anyway. That was all me, but now I we really focus on Google. Google. Google's a big one. It's it's where it's at right now. And Mm -hmm. who knows down the line it might be LinkedIn recommendations. I don't know. Right. So just being quick on your feet and knowing where you're at. But I I think that's an important thing. There's a lot of referral businesses that don't do that stuff. Or there's a lot of people that focus on just lead generation. Yep. And they forget about creating the relationships with the listing agents on the deals, et cetera. To be good, I really you know, more referral everywhere. focused, but branding and 
online reviews. Everything else is so important. So. Most stuff, most stuff. Um, can you take us through once a lead comes to you? Of course. All the way through closing. Yeah. Like from when you give For them sure. an online app or they sit down. I'd, I'd love to know your process there. So yes. that other people know as well. So, and this is something um, on the horizon the next six months. I do plan on hiring at least one or two more employees. Um, so this is my process now. The goal is to get some of the upfront stuff off my plate because I am a broker owner. There's a lot more sure. tasks. So as of right now, client refers me. Um, I put them. I use Pipe Drive as a yeah as a management. Use, I like Pipe Drive. You know, it's it's not a full blown CRM, but it's it, but it's, it's a you good can way to customize keep track. it. It's a, yeah, it's a good if way. If you to like keep doing track. that stuff, okay. Um, so lead comes to me, honestly, and a lot of people in the industry are going to frown upon this. I encourage the phone app right then and there, but I've also had so much practice. Like, we, I've almost taken a thousand applications at my current company. Yeah. So, um, I've had so much practice that my average phone application is under fifteen minutes. Nice. So, that's huge because most time when so you're your getting, phone right now, when you're getting an online application, um, I, I I feel it out if I know that sure. they're going to complete a great online application, and I mean. I, I prejudge people <laughs> for well, better or worse. Well, it's what, that's what sales is going to be good for them. Right. Yeah. Right. Right. That's fine. So if I figure it out, it's good for them. Online app. Great. I'd say 20, 30 percent there. If I can tell they're hesitant, not sure, you know, to serve the real real estate agent best or the referral or them. I explain what the application is and I explain what they're going to get after. Awesome. They're going to get payment estimates, what they're qualified for, documentation will need, you know, mm -hmm. steps of the process. So I look at my phone because I know they can be time wasters. Mm -hmm. So if I have a feeling it's going to be a half hour call, I'll encourage them to apply online, but I'm always accessible. Um, you know, but I'm usually taking a couple apps a day and average is just under 10 to 15 minutes, basically. Cool. So where do you, where are you putting that info? What systems are you using for uh, that? I use lending pad. So, so right into lending pad. Right, right into cool, lending pad. That's what we use as well. Yep. Running credit. And then I pass it off as soon as they come in. I kind of structure the deal, figure out, okay, are they going conventional, FHA? Mm -hmm. Are we helping them compare conventional or FHA? And then I send it off to uh, Vince. He's our admin, LOA. Yep. He supports me. Um, and our other loan officer, he has like a loan officer assistant processor dual. So okay. he sends it over there. So Vince will, he'll run to you for me, let them know, let me know exactly what they're qualified for, start the document portal. We use Maxwell. I know a lot of people okay. use FlowFi. Maxwell, yep. Um, and then, you know, put together a nice, we have spreadsheets that we use, um, similar to Mortgage Coach, not as robust, but it's way quicker and efficient on our end. Payment estimates of what they're looking for to put a really in-depth, hey, here's your purchase analysis. And it's good because they can reference it, but we can too. Because when you start to grow your business, I, re I remember my clients, but I don't remember all their specifics. And this is all... <laughs> pre-contract this is pre-contract this is a pre-qualification maybe a full pre-approval whatever it is game planning yep till they find a house right yeah, i just yeah. want to stop make sure yeah and i think that's a big thing as a loan officer broker retail wholesale you got to set yourself apart yeah you that's, just throw a letter at them and say good luck call me when you're ready our differentiator because even if someone's talked to someone else they might have said hey yeah in an email you're pre-qualified up to two hundred thousand. your rates this well when they get the email from us and a follow-up call blown away. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So up to 15 minutes there, I'd say my loan officer assistant, he can spend anywhere from 15 minutes to an hour in the file, getting them actually pre-qualified. Yeah, depending on how they are. Yep. As docs come in, we work as a team to approve them, send out the pre-qual to the realtor. We do have a nice editable pre-qual, which saves us a lot of time. Yep. And then as soon as the contract comes in, um, we lock most of our clients up front, if not within the first couple of days, just I'm not a risky guy, but no. I treat people the way I would want my loan to be treated. And mm -hmm. on all my purchases and refinances, like I can show my clients, like I locked in. It's just, you know, protects you for the most part. Yeah, no doubt. Know? Um, and it, it helps scale the business too. You know what I mean? Because if you're, if your client's stressing, if you're stressing about the market, it's, it's not a fun business yeah. to be in. And especially in this type of market, you have oh no idea gosh. where, where it's going. Yep. Any yep. which day. 
All right, cool. So you got contract. You locked them in, hopefully. Yep. Right? If, if it's good for the client. So we have a nice... Um, so what I, the first thing I found when I was... Me and my processor, I would send him an overview. Um, he's actually licensed, and he actually locks and discloses for me. Okay. So um, as soon as I get a contract, I basically figure out, okay, what lender are we going with? What rate? Um, what down payment? I structure it, and then I send it off You know, as a nice package deal, but... We had to create this long form because even though I would tell them ninety percent of the story, I'd always miss something. Right. So that is a nice file overview. You know, the more communication we have, the better. And then processing picks it up from there. And I tell the client, like, I self process my processor and you know, we have two kind of trainees. My processor is better at processing than I am mm-hmm. at this point. At the beginning we were similar, you know what I mean? But he is he is leagues beyond me at this point so i coach the client hey you know bruce you know now we have veda on our team um you know they're dealing directly with underwriting their goal is to help you close on time like i'm here the whole time we we talk every single day if you need anything you can reach out to me but they're going to know the nitty-gritty as far as the documentation so you know client is being handed off but they're being handed off in good faith because bruce knows what he's doing right And, and that's that's tough um that's yeah. a big part to scale your business. Yes. Of being, it, it seems very, very simple. Yep. But when you can start saying, when you can get out of the way, the yep. front end LO, and say, listen, these guys are better than me at this point. You have to right. go with them. That's a game changer. It sounds simple, but it's a game changer for you to go help more people. What's your brother's strengths? Yeah, yeah he's he's a licensed LO processor. Okay. We're, we're messy right now. We're <laughs> okay. both a lot alike, right. but I'm running it all. He... Uh, this, that's why I'm glad and I'm honored to do these right. interviews because I'm learning so much right now because he's going to want to go out and sell and do his own thing more. Right. right? I'm going to have to hire someone else. Right. We're going to have to be a bit messy for a little bit. Like we don't miss, yeah. but it's a lot on us. Yeah. Like we're going to have to work on that. It's easy with my brother. I can say, go, go work with my brother now. He's smarter than me at this point. Right. It's easy. But to bring it back, it's, it's tough for a lot of people that, that are converting from just being an LO to a broker owner. Right. And you're the main source of business, now, here's and the, you have to be able to get it to the next person. Here's the tough thing that I have is if we want to help more than 200 people next year, <laughs> I need to figure out the front end, you know, and that's... <sighs> well, let's talk about the front end. <laughs> you know, that's... Like where, where, you, where do you think you're struggling on the front end? Your clients probably don't feel it, but you're feeling it. Yeah, I'm feeling it. I just know if we want to grow more, I'm going to have to have a licensed loan officer on the front end Helping me with deals. And the beauty about being on the retail side is I've seen how people at Bay Equity do it. Um, Mm -hmm. Nova Home Loans, they're huge in Arizona. They have their set process. Um, So I've been able to pick up bits and pieces from different teams. And the the huge thing about being a part of AIM and listening to everyone at Fuse and being able to, you know, we have Shelby in the office today. You know, he's top broker, one of the top brokers in the country, like being able to pick his brain. So I love, I've been able to, take my knowledge from before um, because it's always been in my head scaling. Like I've never been like, I'm going to be at five loans a month and happy with having, you know, Mm -hmm. helping five families. Like I've always wanted to grow it. So our community has been big. I think where a lot of people lack on the mortgage broker side is um, training and scaling and all that. And you have to treat it like a business. So I'm super excited about our next two people that we've hired. And once they're up and running, like, there's going to be more people coming. I'm cool. super stoked. Nice, nice. <laughs> All right, yeah, so you're rocking and rolling, which is great. Is there anything, let's get a bit boring. Yeah. Compliance. Okay. All right, yeah. you're hiring more people. Yep. Um, have you been audited yet? Yes. All right, so you have super been. Super clean. All right, so let's talk about that because yeah. I haven't. A lot of people, that's one thing in the back right. of their mind. How did that go? What, what to prepare for? Every state's different, by the way. But yeah. what was it like? So I have a... Um, So in Arizona, you need to have a responsible individual, an Mm -hmm. RI. I think if there's a couple states, you need that. Um, So I actually, instead of going and doing that myself, um, which could save me money monthly, I actually have an RI that his name is on my license. So that's super helpful. And again, that's not my specialty. He actually helped with mock audits. So that's been super helpful on the local level. There has been some national questions that AIM has helped out with because that's just Arizona laws. You know, if the CFPB comes in, I want to feel comfortable. Like, we're a small shop, but sure, sleeping well at night, I want to make sure I'm doing everything compliant. So 
he was a big help. And thankfully, um, our admin slash LOA Vince, he used to be an engineer. <laughs> so he's basically, he's, he's a man of all jack of all trades, yeah. but he's our director of compliance. He's our director of HR. Engineer, but organized, looks at the details. Exactly. So cool. when, when he goes to scrub things and make sure like he reviews files monthly, make sure we have everything. I feel comfortable knowing that we have it. So I felt pretty good going into our audit and um, we came out squeaky clean, no fines. They actually charge you by the hour in Arizona. I don't know how it works in other yeah, states. Yeah, I think it does in PA as well. <laughs> I'm, I'm waiting for it. Yeah, you're so, paying them to right, audit you, right. basically. I think that's pretty general. So I feel pretty comfortable about that, but that is one of my things. Like, um, I'm not actively recruiting and trying to get 10, 20, 30 loan officers because right. that would be a headache. You yeah. Know? Um, you know, I, I love um, Troy's another loan officer on our team. Us too. I'm super happy with what we got going. And with my personal business, I just want to focus on growing our teams. Um, so I don't have to stress about compliance. I mean, quite as much because it's our deals. I know I'm doing stuff right. Processing, uh, creating a bunch of checklists, mm -hmm. making sure, you know, here's what we expect. So we recently... You know, I, I shopped around for months. We recently signed up for uh, Trainual. It's in learning management system. Okay. Um, just to document our processes. I think that's where most brokers are lacking is I, I learned the hard way. I hired a retail processor. She was a great processor, not a great culture fit. Um, you know, and it's different coming to the wholesale side. Like, mm -hmm. you, there is more work per file, and not yeah. everyone wants to do that. So our two newer processors, no industry experience. Um, they've been a great fit. They don't know better. I guess, you know, sometimes and, that's good. And the end result is showing them the purpose, like our, like, why are we a broker? And it really is for the consumer. So, you know, I feel like we have that in our culture. Um, we brought everyone to aim fuse aim. They're a huge part of ever part of that. Like we're here mm -hmm. for the consumer. You know, if we were just lazy and wanted to make money, I, we'd be, be over in retail. Yeah. Right. <laughs> right. So, um, you know, so that's been huge. Yeah. Now, do you outsource any of your, any of your, compliance or, or payroll? Is anything outsourced right now? Do you recommend it? No, um, but, you know, processing, if you're not at the point of, you know, hiring a full-time processor, I think that's huge. Um, compliance, our, you know, our RI, he's technically outsourced. He's not, right. you know, he has to, he's a W-2 employee, you know, for compliance purposes. But, um, you know, he's we talk on a monthly basis, but he's not in the office day to day. So he's kind of outsourced. So those two things. But I think, also, you know, opposite outsourcing, I don't know if it's insourcing, but hiring a team, you know, once once you're able to hire people, you know, just to get them to work to their strengths, because like going through that audit without Vince would have been a nightmare. <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> we, I, we do outsource accounting. That's something I was doing in QuickBooks one. myself. And I'm like. You know, for the hour a month it takes me, I should pay someone. And I, 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 I thought I was doing it right. Turns out I you wasn't. Were, you you had to split up payroll between owner wages and all these things. So, you know, the little things you learn about that. You know, I have a, I have a CPA and accounting firm separate. So it's kind of crazy oh, how nice. many different things, you know. You got them you all have. separate. That's cool. Yeah. Well, it was awesome speaking to you, yeah. dude. Um, as we're closing it up here, can you just say a few words of, of anything you want to tell someone out there that's thinking about jumping over to the broker side, whether yep. it's just as a loan officer and joining a brokerage or starting your own. Is there anything simple or complex or however you want to do it? Let everyone know. I would say check it out firsthand because once you check it out firsthand, you, you'll realize if it's right for you or not. I think for most people, it is. <laughs> for the consumer, it is. But seeing it firsthand will sell it. You know, um, you can't, I always used to tell realtors like, you can't try my service until you call me on the weekend. And when I first started, right. give me a call, give it a shot. So I think talking to someone who's in it, local broker in your market, um, who either, you know, they could have just transitioned There's plenty of ago. resources here at AIM, AIM. where oh. you can find someone that's local. For sure. And and they'll get you in the hands of someone to go to go check it out yeah. before you make a decision. Because it's not for everyone, right? Yeah. No, yeah, it's not for everyone. I love it, though. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So how I'm can biased. we find you? Uh, you can find me, modernhomelending.com. Cool. Find me on Facebook, Evan Einhorn. You'll find me, Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn. Um, yeah, pretty accessible. Just cool. Google. Awesome. <laughs> well, thank you. That's yeah, thank uh, you. Evan Einhorn, Modern Home Lending. Uh, this was Broker to Broker, sponsored by AIM, Association of Independent Mortgage Experts. 
I'm JP Hussey, and later.